Hello, this is Daniel Mart, and today I'm going to be doing an, an, another video. Uh, this time around, I'm going to be doing another theory video, fan theory, movie theory video. And, yeah, now, this one's a bit interesting because I actually found this on an article, and I said to show you the article for this one. Article for this one, and, yeah, this one is for Batman. It, it revolves around Batman. Batman, the character of Batman, and basically his origin story. Now, some of you may have already seen this by now, um, but I honestly think it's really cool, so I might as well show you. So, yeah, basically, oh, this is going to act slow right now because it's really going to annoy me right now. Okay, so, basically, it starts here. We all know Batman's parents were gunned down in a senseless act of violence, which turned Bruce Wayne into Batman, but what if his parents were murdered? Can this go down, right? Uh, murdered. Um, what if the night his parents were murdered, Bruce Wayne was actually the one who caused it? So, so yeah, this one has to involve time travel, and it's pretty cool. It's pretty close. I'm just gonna show you the article. So basically, it says it's a couple years from now. The chips are on the line. The multiverse is at stake again. Only this time, it all comes down to Batman. He defeats the ultimate evil of DC, only to find himself launched through time into a strange, familiar city. Okay, so yeah. Um, he's scrambling to find some clothes after his costume got destroyed by Z-Rays, which I assume are whatever, you know, Z-Rays, uh, whatever makes him go through time. In the epic final battle, he nabs some threads off a low-hanging clothesline. He leaves his bat wallet full of cash on the win windowsill. He's not a bad guy, after all, which is kind of funny. Bat wallet, um, didn't they do that with, um, the Schumacher films with, um, Val Kilmer and George Clooney, didn't they have like a bat credit card, Batman credit card? That's kind of funny, but whatever. Just then, he sees a family of three emerge from an alley nearby with a strange sense of deja vu. Bruce recognizes his mother and father and his child's childhood self. This is the night Bruce Bruce's parents are murdered. Bruce rolls around, he looks around looking for the culprit, Joe Chill, but the only um, people there are himself and the Waynes. They barely get an answer at the ragged figure as they start to start to walk past. So yeah, just off that, I think we all know where this is heading. Um, let's see on the next page. Let's see. I, I hope this is, goes down fast. Next page. Now. Next page. Now. Next page. Now. This is going to get really annoying really fast if it doesn't load. Sorry for the lag, by the way. Um, hurry up already, god damn it. I'm trying to make a video here. Tick tock, tick tock, tick a tick tock. Tick tock, tick tock, tick a tick tock. Okay, so he continues down. And then with a spike of cold horror, uh, Bruce realizes that in its final death throes, um, the ultimate evil he had faced in the future sent him backwards through time for a very specific reason. Color draining from his face, Bruce reaches um, reaches a hand into the burrowed coat's pocket to find the dense metallic lump. Drawing it out of the pocket, he comes face to face with the snub nose revolver. So, yeah, we all know where this is heading right now. Um, a flash of terrible insight comes to Bruce with an uh, iron... Iron certainty. Iron certainty. Um, let's see what, what else it says here. Oh, where am I? Where am I? Um, I went too far down. I went too far down. It went too far down. Uh, can this thing actually load for real? Um, with Batman, the universe will never survive the ultimate evil. Without this knight, there is no Batman. This is the only chance. He must choose. Breaker's rule to never kill or be complicit in a certain annihilation of the universe. There is no real choice here. Which I find this part funny. He breaks his one rule to never kill. I mean, he's killed before. It depends what continuity you go with. But for sure, he's killed at least once in every continuity. Um, yeah, so yeah, with tears down his face, he remembers um, with trained photographic memory. Um, the hollow words that were spat on the elder Wayne, um, Thomas Wayne. Um, they turned startled as if they, as if his hands had minds of their own. 
He feels the pressure on his finger as he slowly and inexorably pulls the trigger. Bruce Wayne um, has killed his parents in order to save everything else. So, yeah, and it gets darker than that. It gets some pretty interesting, um, even more interesting. You think, oh, so Bruce Wayne is John Chill, Joe Chill. Um, no, he's not just Joe Chill. You'll be amazed when this goes. Um... I mean, it depends if this actually decides to load. Um, in a blind haze, Bruce the Elder stumbles from the alley as Bruce the Younger wails in the night. Um, nearing the narrow bridge, Bruce's, mind's, um, Bruce's mind begins to crumble under the weight of what he has just done to himself. There's one more part, which is... For, uh, I feel like the, the third part, the third the third page or whatever of this story is a little bit forced, but even after that, it's pretty cool. I wouldn't say fans... I wouldn't... I don't know. I don't know about you call this a fan theory per se. I think it'd be more like fan fiction. But even after that, it's it's pretty it's pretty interesting as a whole that someone was able to come up with this. Um, let's see, number three, page three, and fuck. Um, let's see, page three now. Sorry for the lag. Yeah, I don't know, but every time I try to do a screen recording, so this shit just decides to fucking lag like a little bitch. It pisses me off. So, um, page three now. Page three now. Page three now. It annoys the living shit out of me, and I go bipolar for a second. If I just want this to go to page three, and it says page three now, but fuck, can I get my page three? Um... Yeah. Page three, page three. I'm waiting. Tick tock, tick tock. Okay. Thank you. Unable to bear the maddening maelstrom, maelstrom of conflicting grief and certainty, he climbs to the highest point of the bridge, looks out over the, uh, the long suffering city, and jumps without looking, with, without looking into the icy depths of a hundred feet below. Later that night, dock workers pull a body from the water. No ID, no wallet, nothing in the pocket but a gun and lint. Broken, deathly pale, but alive. As the foreman hang up the call um, to the cops, he almost swears he hears something from his body. It sounds almost like laughter. <laughs> It is laughter of a man who knows the funniest joke in the world but just can't remember the punchline. <laughs> so, yeah, basically, this theory states that Bruce Wayne is both Joe Chill and the Joker. So, what the fuck? What the, I mean, I, I feel like that's a pretty, that's a pretty interesting theory as a whole. Um, I like it. I guess. I mean, it's more of a fan, fan, um, fan story, fan fiction in a sense. But I just wanted to share this because this was, this was pretty cool. I just, I don't know, it was pretty cool, pretty interesting, and I just wanted to show you, show you this. Um, what the title of this would be? Um, the title of the video. Um, I don't know. It's Bruce Wayne, Joe Chill, and the Joker, or some shit like that. I have no idea. But um, pretty interesting theory as a whole, and. I, I wouldn't go with it. I wouldn't say, yeah, this is ca ca um, canonical or conical or whatever, canon. I wouldn't say this is canon, but I'm just pretty, it's just kind of a fun theory. I'm um, pretty f interesting and funny theory, but I highly doubt it's true. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on it. Um, comment down below on your thoughts on, on the theory. Theory, I'll leave a link down below for those who want to check out the theory um, by themselves, who those, for those who want to check it out. Like the video, show on Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, or whatever you guys prefer. And that's basically it for now. This is Daniel Mart signing off.